Hey guys, Nick here again, welcome back. This is our fifth installment in our Rigging Essentials series, and today we're gonna talk about master links. If you don't know what they are or how they're used, stick around, because we're gonna break it all down for you. It's coming up next. Okay, so what is a master link? Well, typically, these are gonna sit at the top of your rigging assembly. And what they're used for is to gather all of the legs down into this bottom part of the link, and then this link will connect overhead to a crane hook or an attachment on your forklift, whatever your lifting point is, which is why the links are a little bit oversized. You can also have sling eyes that are directly connected into the master link. So you could have a thimbled wire rope eye going in here or a synthetic sling going in here. It doesn't have to be a chain sling. It doesn't have to be a mechanical coupler. Um, so it's really just dependent upon what type of lifting bridle you're using. In terms of types, as you can see in front of me, I've got a few different options. So oval is always gonna be the most common and kind of what I think of as like the classic master link shape. We also have round and pear. Even though we still sell these quite a bit, they're not really used very often today anyway in rigging assemblies. There are some applications where you might want to use a pear link, but they're just not as common. So for all intents and purposes, most of our usage and, and talking points are gonna be related to oval master links. Popular brands are going to include Crosby, which we have represented here a few times, Gunnabo. We even have some German brands and some other European brands like PWAG, which are really common and popular nowadays. So I'd referenced earlier that you gather all of your sling legs as in multiple. You don't have to have multiple legs to use a master link. We do make an offer on our website at lifting.com different slings that are a master link on top and a single sling leg coming off the bottom. And that could be appropriate because you need to connect that sling again to a larger hook overhead, and you need the space offered by a master link to do that. If you just have a thimbled eye on top of your wire rope assembly or a standard sling eye, it might not be big enough. Plus, these take quite a bit of abuse compared to a wire rope, which is comprised of a lot of small wires and outer strands that tend to wear down. This master link is actually forged all the way around, not even welded and made from grade 100 alloy steel. So it takes a lot to eat at and to form this type of link. So you'll notice that most of these links are just one link. So I have one oval, one circle, one pair. This one in particular, you've got your oval master link and then two smaller links on the bottom. In the industry, we typically call this a sub-assembly. You might see it referenced as a master link assembly, as in you have three components here that are assembled together to, to make one primary component. So the purpose of this is that you can have still your large master link on top for attachment to bigger hooks. And then on the bottom, you have these independent connection points where you can run two slings out of each one or two sling legs out of each one. So maybe on a four leg chain sling, you would have two couplers coming into this link and two couplers coming into this link. So all four legs are, are held by this one link, but they're split across these two. That helps to prevent crowding and bunching at the bottom of the master link and binding. So the most popular master links that we offer are gonna be made from grade 100 alloy steel, and that's because they are used often with grade 100 alloy chain. So your chain components and the chain grade itself should always match. If you're using grade 100 chain, you want a grade 100 master link. Now having said that, these master links can be used for wire rope slings or even synthetic slings, but again, a lot of the capacity charts that you'll see are gonna be based on a grade 100 application. Some of the links may not be grade 100 or alloy steel at all, for example, this round link, this pair link are not even alloy steel. So you've got varying capacities and grades of material used for overhead lifting. With chains in particular, grade 80 for years was the standard. It's largely been replaced by grade 100. But it's important to know what the material is of the master link you're selecting because these two links, as an example, would not be appropriate for use on a grade 80 or grade 100 chain sling. So one thing that we encourage is looking in the catalog or the spec sheets related to these products Companies like Crosby or Gunnabo do a really good job of breaking down the capacities of these products, these master links, depending upon the application. Really, that's most uh, specifically on the oval master links like this A342, where you could have a different rating based on wire rope use, alloy chain use, and then even if it's a single leg or a double leg or a triple leg, et cetera, they will show you kind of a build kit and specs based on the sling that you're trying to build. Make sure you reference that because one thing that's important to know is on these master links, you do not have a working load limit. It's not like a shackle. 
and that's really dictated by industry standards. But if you think about it, it kind of makes sense because this is usually just one component of a bigger assembly. So you wouldn't want to put on here 10 tons or 20,000 pounds. And then somebody who might not be well versed in rigging looks at this link and says, oh, this assembly is good for 10 or 20,000 pounds. Depending upon the components and the build of the sling underneath it, the rating could be totally different. So don't look to the link to provide you with a working load limit. Instead, lean on the charts provided by the manufacturer to show you which link to use for what size of chain or what size of wire rope and the corresponding working load limit. Now again, working load limit is definitely a buzzword in our industry, always obey it. And it's gonna depend on what type of material you're using. You could be looking at a four to one or a five to one safety factor. So again, look at those charts, factor all of that stuff in, figure out the proper working load limit and always stick to that. So this is one reference point. This one inch link could be used on a chain sling of a different diameter. So whether it's five sixteenths or three eighths or half inch, and depending upon what size chain I'm using and how many legs, that could stipulate the working load limit assigned to this master link. And again, those charts are gonna help you understand whether or not it's the right link to use. So there's not a working load limit specifically assigned here. You just have to lean on the charts and folks like us who can help you through that search and that, that process of finding the right product. Something that's a little less common but still done is what's called an SOO. So a single leg, that's the S, and the O and the O is for oval and oval or oblong and oblong meaning you could have a master link chain going between, master link on the other end. There are applications and times where our customers have us build those for them and it's totally okay. It's, it's a sling that we can offer for you. Um, not super common, but again, while this is normally thought of as a top fitting, it could have an alternate application where it's actually a fitting on both ends of your sling. So while most master links are just a single piece of steel with no baked in functionality. There are master links that are a little bit newer, although certainly not new, they've been around now for quite a while, but still a newer type of product in the industry versus the conventional products. This one in particular, this is the MG Link by Gunnabo, which is part of the Crosby Group. So this is a unique master link product because as you can see, the top is smaller, yet still kind of strategically sized by Gunnabo to accommodate most common hooks or shackles in the field that would be appropriate for this size and capacity of chain. So here's the functionality of this. The old way of doing it was that multiple components to allow for adjustability, but with this chain pocket built into this master link assembly, you simply take your chain from below, lay it into the top, and now you just change the length of your overall uh, chain sling. And it's really important because a lot of customers get hung up on what length of chain sling they want. And what we tell a lot of people is go a little bit longer than you think you might need because you can always do an adjustable version and then you can simply shorten your chain sling as needed. So one important thing to note with this type of adjustable chain sling is you can't start adjusting on the first or second link. I think I counted it's roughly the sixth link is the first one that I can actually get up and into that pocket. So your adjustability is gonna be dictated by the individual links of chain and what reaches into that pocket. So uh, just something worth noting, if you're looking for really finite adjustment, as, as in you want your chain sling to be one or two inches shorter, you're not gonna be able to accommodate that. However, once you get to the sixth link, you can use any link thereafter. So this is an old school type of chain sling that we would call an ASOS. So it's adjustable, it's a single leg with an oval master link and a sling hook on the bottom. One advantage, depending upon where you put your grab hook, is you can have quicker adjustment. So if this grab hook is brought up, you might be able to adjust on just the third or fourth link. But again, this is kind of the traditional way of doing an adjustable chain sling. And a lot of our customers preferred this method for years. The new version from Gunnabo came out. Crosby has a version of this as well called the Eliminator and they weren't sold on it, so they had us continue to build theirs this way. But again, the functionality is essentially the same. I'm gonna lay that hook, or excuse me, that link of chain into the hook, and now I have my adjusted length for my overall chain sling. So it's important with any piece of rigging that you do regular inspections, master links are no different. So check them often for signs of wear or deformation. Even as robust as something like this is, being a one inch piece of round forged alloy steel, grade 100, it never ceases to amaze us what we see come through the shop that's been twisted, bent, cut into. So master links again are no different, check them often. Always use the appropriate grade of hardware. 
match the chain grade to your component grade. So again, grade 100 chain means grade 100 components, including the master link. Something else that's unique about Bishop, being the size of a company that we are, we train customers all over the country. So if you or your crew need training, you can lean on us, reach out to us, navigate to lifting.com, click on the contact us link, and then fill out the form and somebody from the branch near you will get back in touch and we can talk training options. So in summary, I think you can see that master links are really a integral part of rigging uh, assemblies and bridles that we build on a daily basis and that you're probably using in the field today. You can't really have multiple leg slings without a master link. And again, quite often our customers need even a single leg sling with a master link on top. So really valuable tools, just make sure you understand how they're rated, how to select them. And again, if you need help, don't be afraid to reach out and let us provide that assistance. So guys, that's it. Thank you for watching. If you appreciate this video, give it a like or a comment or a share. And again, we'll see you on the next one.